The top stories tonight in Y News. Department of Public Works and Highway Secretary Mark Villar to conduct a major reshuffle of district engineers following corruption allegations involving infrastructure projects. President Rodrigo Duterte vetoes unconstitutional items in 2021 national budget. The Department of Health and the Food and Drug Administration investigate the unauthorized use of COVID-19 vaccine of some members of the Presidential Security Group. Philippine National Police and Health Officials to run after peddlers of fake and unlicensed COVID-19 vaccine. Skyway Stage 3 partially opens, providing motorists free toll for a month. And know why picking your nose is dangerous, especially during pandemic, according to health experts. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, December 29, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, some members of the House of Representatives vehemently denied any participation in alleged graft and the implementation of infrastructure projects of the Department of Public Works and Highways. Ray Pelayo explains why. President Rodrigo Duterte bared last night the names of the lawmakers who allegedly demanded kickbacks from project contractors. The chief executive explained to the public that reading out their names is not a condemnation nor indictment that they are guilty of something. The public should be aware that there is no hard evidence, that's one, that it cannot be translated by just reading the names that they are already guilty because presumption of innocence would lie all throughout until conviction or acquittal. Reading from the PACC list, Duterte named at least nine lawmakers who received kickbacks from project contractors. Occidental Mindoro Representative Josephine Ramirez Sato, former Ifugao Representative Chodoro Teddy Bagilat, Quezon City 5th District Representative Alfred Vargas, Misamis Occidental Representative Henry Ominal, Isabella Representative Alicia Shinatan, Northern Summer 1st District Representative Paul Daza, 4th District of Quezon Representative Angelina Helen Tan, Act CAS Party List Representative Eric Goyap, and Bataan 1st District Representative Geraldine Roman. But the lawmakers accused of corruption leaned heavily on the pronouncement of the President. Occidental Mindoro Representative Josephine Tato said her inclusion in the list is a move to impinge her credentials as a public servant. The lawmaker also blamed politics for the inclusion because PACC Chairperson Greco Belhica is an ally and party mate of a prominent incumbent official in the province who intends to run against her in the 2022 election. Former Fugao Representative Tere Bagilat also denied the allegation saying in a tweet he would not be selling agriculture products if he is involved in corruption. Misamis Occidental Representative Henry Ominal still supports the president's campaign against corruption and said he is willing to subject to any investigation to clear his name. Same goes with Bataan Representative Geraldine Roman. Quezon Province Representative Angelina Helen Tan invites Velhega to visit the projects in Gumaca and not just based the complaint to an anonymous person. Quezon City Representative Alfred Vargas meanwhile cites his 12 years in public service with no bad records. Northern Summer Representative Paul Daza said that he believes that former officials and contractors whom his office exposed for abandoning projects retaliated by sending malicious and unfounded complaints to the PACC. Act CIS Party List Representative Eric Yap said had never once been involved in a bidding process by the DPWH or even in placing these engineers in Benguet. 
The lawmaker said he is willing to resign if proven guilty. Sana ginawa niyo po ang inyong trabaho, tinawagan mo siya, ang ombudsman, kung nilalakad ko ba ang kaso ni Lorna Ricardo. Pangalawa, tumawag ka ba sa DPWH upang alamin kung inendorso ko ba si Lorna Ricardo upang maging district engineer ng Benguet o ng ibang probinsya. Yap said that he will file a resolution seeking an investigation into the duty-free mess Belheka is allegedly involved in. All the incumbent lawmakers included in the PACC list, while denying that they are involved in any wrongdoing, said that they will cooperate with any investigation on them. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Malacanang said there was nothing malicious about President Rodrigo Duterte naming lawmakers allegedly involved in corruption at the Department of Public Works and Highways or DPWH. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said despite having named them, President Duterte himself clarified that they are still under investigation and have not yet been proven guilty. Roque said the president finally decided to reveal the names of alleged dishonest law makers as reported to him by the PACC as part of freedom of information. He denied claims that the president was subjecting the said lawmakers to trial by publicity. So hindi naman sinasabing nagkasala na pero merong investigasyon ongoing dito sa mga ito. Bakit siya nagbago? Sabi nga niya, freedom of information. Department of Public Works and Highways Secretary Mark Villar will impose a major reshuffle following the dismissal of a Several DPWH district directors and district engineers. Joan Nano tells us why live. Joan, why were the officials dismissed? who are allegedly involved in corruption practices, DPWH Secretary Mark Villar met with the said officials to immediately remove them from their post. Among those that were specifically identified by the President were DPWH District Director Lorna Ricardo, District Engineers Marlene Inguilio, Anneli Manzano, Caroline Abinales, Edita Babaran, and Edmundo De Luna. With the dismissal of several officials, Secretary Villar will implement a major reshuffle in the agency's manpower. The Secretary also said that they are seeking assistance from the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission and with the National Bureau of Investigation in order to intensify their anti-corruption campaign. Let us hear the statement of DPWH Secretary Mark Villar. Uh, the President gave us clear directives yesterday, which we will implement. At the same time, tuloy-tuloy naman ang investigasyon namin, nagkapag-issue na kami ng maraming show cause order sa mga personnel na may mga complaints. And uh, umingi din kami ng uh, assistance sa NBI, and na uh, nakikipag-coordinate kami sa PACC uh, para magkaroon ng uh, accomplishment sa anti-corruption campaign. Jagos Secretary Villar assures that the issue will not affect the morale of his people as well as the agency's target in infrastructure projects. The Secretary adds that there might be more names to be revealed as the PICC together with the Mega Interagency Task Force Against Corruption continues their investigation headed by the Department of Justice. Uh, wala kaming tolerance sa mga corruption and obviously uh, the President has made it clear and very clear that uh, hindi namin to tolerate. So, uh, you've been warned. And now, we'll go after those that have, uh, uh, have clear ano, evidence. Jago, during the press briefing last night, President Rodrigo Duterte orders Secretary Villar to submit the list of complete names of the DPWH district directors as he threatens to make rounds and imposes reorganization among the agency's official. Jago? Thank you, John Nano, reporting live from Quezon City. Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara said the task force against corruption will wait if the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission's report on lawmakers linked to anomalous government projects will be referred to the task force for validation. Dante Amento tells us why. 
The Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission or PACC's report to President Rodrigo Duterte will not affect the separate investigation being conducted by the Task Force Against Corruption. This is in connection with the members of Congress allegedly involved in corruption at the Department of Public Works and Highways or DPWH, whom the President mentioned their names last night. According to Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara, the President may endorse the PACC report to the task force for validation, further investigation or case build up. Guevara adds he did not see yet the PACC report and if it is complete or ready for formal filing of charges at the office of the Ombudsman. The task force against corruption had already submitted its report to the President on the update of its ongoing investigation of corruption in government agencies, including the DPWH, yesterday. And based on the complaints and reports they had received, the names of some congressmen disclosed by the President were also mentioned. The task force is expected to file formal charges against some individuals next year or until June 2022. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte vetoed some provisions of the 2021 General Appropriations Act, including the provision allowing agencies to directly use their income. In a virtual presser, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said the revenues of the agencies must go to the National Treasury and it is necessary to spend it in accordance with the national budget. Roque also said President Duterte urged Congress to promote the proper and transparent management and expenditure of the public funds based on sound fiscal policies. The President signed Republic Act No. 11518 to boost the administration's efforts to effectively respond to the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic and provide critical measures to aid the economic and social sectors. In other news, uh, President Rodrigo Duterte on uh, yesterday announced that Metro Manila and Davao City will continue to be under general community quarantine or GCQ for the entire month of January. Also under GCQ are Isabela, Santiago City, Batangas, Iloilo City, Tacloban City, Lanao del Sur, Iligan City, and Davao del Norte. All other areas are placed under modified general community quarantine or MGCQ. The new round of quarantine classifications will take effect on January 1 until January 31, 2021, subject to local government units appeals. President Duterte called on the public anew to stay at home and refrain from taking unnecessary trips outdoors. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on the right side of your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. Health officials and the Food and Drug Administration said they would investigate President Rodrigo Duterte's claim that many people, including soldiers, have been inoculated with unauthorized vaccines from China. Aiko Miguel explains why. The Food and Drug Administration firmly stated that they have no idea on the inoculation of members of the Presidential Security Group and other personnel. According to FDA Director General Eric Domingo, they were not even asked about the safety and efficacy of the vaccine before administering it to them. Kinausap ko rin po si Secretary, nagulat din nga po siya. We were not consulted. I was not uh, done in consultation with the Department of Health or the FDA. It is stated in the FDA Circular Number 2020-009, the guidelines on notification, evaluation, regulatory enforcement action and review, and monitoring of donated health products solely intended to address COVID-19 public health emergency. Also, according to FDA, all medical donations are required to undergo DOH and FDA's process. It is also stated in the DOH Administrative Order No. 2007-0017, the process on acceptance of foreign and local donations during emergency and disaster situations. The DOH kasi does accept uh, no donations like for food and drugs, but usually if they are foreign donations, they go to the Bureau of International Health Cooperation uh, and then the BIHC of the Department of Health coordinates with the FDA to get the necessary clearances. 
for them to be able to grow into the country. Pero in this case, uh, I do not think there was any uh, process that was uh, that was done. So at this time, since yun nga hindi pa rin talaga namin alam kung saan nang galing, kung paano nakalating dito yung bakuna. And because the reported vaccination did not undergo the process, there is a clear violation that should be imposed on those that have supplied and distributed the said vaccines. In this case, ito pong ano, wala pong dumaan kasi sa amin dito and hindi po namin alam, wala pa po kaming information. There's no registered COVID-19 uh, vaccine in the Philippines at this time. DOH together with the FDA maintains no, na dapat lahat ng bakuna na gagamitin natin dito sa ating bansa should be authorized by the Food and Drug Administration. This is because we want to ensure na ito ay safe, ito ay of quality, and it's going to provide that protection to the public. For the information of everybody that we only use registered products by the Food and Drug Administration. Currently, according to DG Domingo, it is not clear yet who is liable on the vaccination, so they are now investigating it. Even the donation of vaccines are being investigated now by the DOH and FDA. Yesterday, I gave an order to our regulatory enforcement unit para magkaroon ng, ano, ng investigation at malaman kung ano ang uh, status at kung ano yung nangyaring pagbabakuna at kung anong bakuna ang nagamit. I want to see the details. I know I, I, I do not have any idea yet how it happened or what was the what was the process, how they were selected, and ano, what vaccine was used. No? So until now, until I get more data, siguro and more facts, I, I, I cannot speculate on the, uh, on any liability on anybody. Hindi natin alam kung the president talaga ang nagbigay ng orders para magpabakuna. Wala namang sinabing ganong information. And as what Yusek Eric has mentioned, inaantay pa rin natin ano, na makakuha tayo ng full details because uh, we really do not have any information on what transpired here. On the other hand, the DOH assures that once there is COVID-19 vaccine already available in the country, those in the priority list of the government will still first receive the COVID-19 vaccines. These are the healthcare workers, frontliners, vulnerable population like children and the elderly. Huwag po kayo mag-alala doon po sa ating itinalang mga priorities uh, para sa pagbabakuna. Ang susundin pa rin po natin yan. Yun pong ating priority na healthcare workers will be the first, the vulnerable group, the frontliners. Lahat po yan ay masusunod kapag dating na po ng mga prinocure natin na magiging rehistrado dito sa ating bansa. Ay ko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, the palace assures that the country's anti-graft law has not been violated when the presidential security group accepted donated coronavirus vaccines. Rosa Nikos explains why. The presidential security group admitted that their personnel performing close in security operations to the chief executive have already been vaccinated against coronavirus disease. According to PSG Commander Jesus Durante, this is to ensure that they are not a threat to the President's health and safety. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque defended that no government funds were used in the inoculation because the COVID-19 vaccines were donated. The palace also insists that the government's list of priority groups for COVID-19 vaccination was not violated. Wala pong ginastos na pera galing sa kabanang bayan dito kaya wala pong nalabag na uh, prioridad na ating sinabi sa publiko no ang prioridad po natin ay nananatiling ka pareho pa rin yung mga mahihirap yung mga matatanda yung mga frontliners both uh, health and otherwise the issue has been controversial since President Duterte revealed that some military personnel and individuals have already received the vaccine developed by Chinese firm Sinopharm there are some who question the process of how these vaccines entered the country and why the soldiers were the first ones to get it. The palace also responded to the question if PSG personnel violated the Anti-Graph and Corrupt Practices Act when they received the donated COVID-19 vaccines. Yung mga tokens po, pinapayagan naman, lalo na kung panahon ng Pasko. Pwede pong tokens. Ay. Yung mga wala masyadong halaga. Ibig sabihin. Opo. The palace, however, did not answer how the vaccines entered the country and if President Duterte directed the vaccination of the PSG personnel.
In an interview, Interior and Local Government Secretary Eduardo Año said members of the PSG volunteered to be inoculated with a COVID-19 vaccine. Based on FDA Circular Number 2020-009, even the donated health products for COVID-19 response need to undergo clearance, evaluation, and regulation of the FDA. The palace has not responded on this. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Some lawmakers in the upper chamber questioned the inoculation of some members of the military and the president's cabinet with unregistered COVID-19 vaccine. Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drillon echoed the position of the Food and Drug Administration or FDA that the distribution and administration of unauthorized COVID-19 vaccines is illegal and against the law. According to the senator, it violated the FDA circular because no emergency use authorization was issued prior to the inoculation. For Drillon, the vaccination of some military members and the cabinet officials set a bad example example and undermine the authority of FDA to ensure the quality and efficacy of medicines and vaccines to be used by Filipinos. He added that the reported vaccination using unregistered vaccines will not contribute to develop public confidence in the government's vaccination program. The senator also asked how did the vaccines get past the Bureau of Customs. Meanwhile, Senator Francis Pangilinan says it only shows that administration that the administration took advantage of the vaccine even without the approval of the FDA, while Senator Aimee Marcos called on the government to be fair and prioritize those who are at high risk and not those who have connections. However, for Senate President Vicente Soto III, there is nothing wrong about the vaccination of some military members. According to Soto, there is no law that prohibits a person to take any medicine or vaccine Vaccine that is not approved by the country's FDA. The senator also believes that the, the, the vaccines were given and administered for free. The Senate Committee of the Whole is set to conduct its hearing on the government's COVID-19 vaccination plan on January 11. The Philippine National Police said that no police officer has received a vaccine for the novel coronavirus. The National Police is also working with health experts to run after COVID-19 vaccines being illegally sold in the country. Leia Ilagan will tell us why. The vaccine for COVID-19 that was made available to some members of the military has not been officially provided to police personnel. PNP Chief Police General Debode Sina said they also haven't received any instruction on how to distribute the vaccine once it is available. But the PNP Chief said they will follow the order of the President. Hindi ko po alam, diba? So, wala pa pong guidance sa amin at uh, hintay na lang po namin yung instructions from uh, higher quarters or from Malacanang at saka sa IMG. The President has already made the, some of this policy, so hintay na lang po namin kung ano ba talaga ang instruction. Wala pa pong uh, specific instruction, wala pa pong black and white, wala pa pong policy kung ano gagawin na. Meanwhile, the PNP is coordinating with the Food and Drug Administration and the Department of Health on the possible proliferation of fake COVID-19 vaccines in the country. The PNP leadership earlier tapped the Criminal Investigation and Detection Group to monitor the report. Sinas also included the anti-cybercrime group in running after fake vaccines and COVID vaccines being sold in the black market as this could also be offered online. Nakausap ko na yung sa ano sa FDA yung bagong uh, director general ng FDA no at uh, nag-usap na kami diyan na they will help again meet again with our people lalo na sa CIDG at saka sa ECG kasi nga yun din yung inaalala nila kasabay sa pag-aaral din namin na because of yung sinasabing mayroong mga vaccine baka mamaya yung mga fake vaccine ay tindi po Leia Ilagan UNTV News and Rescue we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippines has recorded below 1,000 new COVID-19 cases for the third straight day already. The DOH said that 886 new infections 
were logged nationwide. This brought the cumulative tally to 471,526, of which 23,348 are active cases or those who are still ill. Davao City recorded the highest number of new cases with 61, followed by Pampanga with 58, Bulacan with 45, Quezon City 45, and Cavite with 37. There were also 253 new survivors, reaching the total of recoveries to 439,016. The death toll, meanwhile, went up to 9,162 with 38 more fatalities. The Department of Public Works and Highways, along with the San Miguel Corporation, has partially opened today the Skyway Stage Project, wherein motorists will enjoy free toll for a month. Joan Nano tells us why. After more than six years of construction, the 18-kilometer Skyway Stage 3 project has partially opened to motorists starting earlier today. It is an elevated expressway from Buendia, Makati up to Balintawak in Quezon City. However, since it is only a partial operations, only two lanes are open for motorists, along with seven ramps including entry and exit points in Buendia, Quezon Avenue, and Balintawak. While in Plaza de Lao, only the southbound ramp has opened to motorists for the meantime. According to DPWH, there's still some construction that has to be finished and they target to open the full operations on January 14, 2021. It is still at Skyway. Uh, expect nila yung full uh, three three, which is three lanes northbound, three lanes southbound, ang uh, ma-open. And uh, sa ngayon kasi uh, dapat mabagal lang takbo natin ngayon dahil may ongoing works. With the opening of entire stretch of Skyway, travel time from North Luzon going to South Luzon Expressway and vice versa will be reduced to 30 minutes from the current more than two hours of travel, while motorists coming from Makati bound for Quezon City will only have to spend 20 minute travel time if they will use the Skyway newly opened extension road. DPWH estimates that around 55,000 motorists traversing EDSA, C5 and other major thoroughfares will be diverted to Skyway, which is a big help to ease traffic congestion. The project is funded by the San Miguel Corporation, which is among the biggest infrastructure project under the government's Build, Build, Build program. Motorists traversing the Skyway Stage 3 will enjoy one month free toll. As of now, the authorities has yet to announce the toll rates as the toll regulatory board still has to deliberate on it. Joanna Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on the right side of your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. Hundreds locally stranded individuals gathered in Quirino Grandstand in Manila today. The local government of Seaton uh, Negros Oriental subsequently provided free transportation and antigen tests for COVID-19 to the LSIS. Asher Kadapan Jr. explains why. About 500 individuals crowded the Carina Grandstand in Ermita, Manila early this morning. They were residents of Seattle Negros Oriental who moved to Metro Manila and adjacent areas to find livelihood. But the crisis brought about by COVID-19 pandemic drove them back to their hometown. January 22, napunta ako dito kasi maghanap ako ng trabaho. Kaso lang na abutan ako ng lockdown. Nakatrabaho lang ako ng tatlo yatang buwan. Tapos, doon ako nakatira sa kapatid ko. Tapos, ano na, umuwi na lang ako. Wala na akong ibang choice. Doon na lang po kami manirahan. Kasi dito mahirap. Pag wala kang trabaho, nga ka. Due to the clamor of the residents, the local government unit of the municipality of Seattle initiated a program to bring home the locally stranded individuals. Seattle Mayor Cezanne Fritz Diaz personally attended to the LSIs in providing the free transportation and antigen tests for COVID-19. This is the right timing na they, they can spend New Year to Negros. And this is a long, long request pa ng ating mga kababayan so that uh, maka, maka sila, maka sila. 
but two LSIs were confirmed positive for COVID-19 while showing asymptomatic signs. May nag-positive po, uh, dalawa, oo, sa pagkakaalam ko. At uh, madali naman po natin silang uh, nailayo o na-isolate po mula po sa mga tao kaninang madaling araw pa. Upon arrival in Seattle, the LGU will provide the LSIs another antigen test to ensure they are free from COVID-19 before they finally adjoin with their loved ones. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Health or DOH said that it recommended to impose travel restrictions on countries with the reported case of the new coronavirus variant. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Department of Health confirms that they have submitted to the Interagency Task Force the list of countries that will be included in the 14-day travel ban of those coming in the country. According to the DOH, aside from the United Kingdom, the country has to restrict borders to prevent the entry of the new variant of COVID-19. It was presented to the Office of the President last night, as you all know. And Currently, the Office of the Executive Secretary will be implementing guidelines and will be issuing it and we will wait for that no? para makita natin kung ano talaga yung na-approve and when will the effectivity be. 18 countries were on the prior list but additional countries will be added based on reports of areas with cases of the new variant of COVID-19. Nung nag-usap sa IATF, we had a total of 18 countries no? uh, with this identified variant uh, na pina Prinesent yan ang WHO sa atin. This is the figure that uh, we are using itong labing walo. Pero doon sa recommendation naman ng Department of Health, sinabi namin na kung sakasakali in the coming days madadagdagan itong listahan na ito, uh, nandun dun sa prinopost namin that it should also be part of the restrictions pag dumating tayo doon. According to the DOH, once approved, Malacanang will announce when it'll take effect. Meanwhile, the public is advised to be extra cautious, especially this holiday season, to prevent the surge of COVID-19 cases while waiting for COVID-19 vaccines. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The application for a clinical trial of Janssen COVID-19 vaccine has been approved, the country's Food and Drug Administration or FDA said. Janssen COVID-19 vaccine was developed by Johnson & Johnson. Domingo said the applications of two other vaccine developers are being evaluated by the DFA. By the FDA, rather, Clover Biopharmaceuticals and Sinovac, which are both from China. The FDA earlier expressed hopes to issue an emergency use authorization by January for Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. And for the news abroad, here's Stephanie C. reporting live from Hong Kong. Good evening, William. With Germany's COVID-19 vaccination kicking off recently, the vaccination program has been overshadowed by an overdose mishap and transportation issues with the vaccines. Maybe and Dog will tell us why live. Maeve? Staff, eight elderly care workers in the city of Stralsund were accidentally given five times the recommended dose of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine on Sunday, according to district authorities. The workers, seven women and one man who received the overdose, aged between 38 and 54. Four of them have been admitted to hospital as a precautionary measure and for observation after developing flu-like symptoms. The district's chief, Stefan Kurtz, said in a statement that he deeply regrets what happened and that this incident is due to individual errors. He hopes that the affected workers do not experience any serious side effects. The incident came after some of the German districts declined to use the vaccines they received over the weekend. This was due to concerns that they became too warm while being delivered in household cool boxes, according to Christian Meissner, Lichtenfels district administrator. This is contrary to the proper storage of the vaccine in specially designed cool boxes with dry ice after being kept at ultra-low temperatures. The transportation issue led to 1,000 shots being sent back and Mr. Meissner added that they will not be used 
to avoid the public's distrust in the vaccination campaign. Meanwhile, authorities also provided to previous statements from BioNTech that larger doses were tested in the first phase of the study without serious consequences. BioNTech did not provide immediate comments for the said incidents and mishaps. Steph? Thank you, Maeve, reporting live. Greater Sydney authorities identify new local cases that will soon be equal to the numbers of the Avalon Northern Beaches cluster cases. The government now enforced stricter restrictions towards the year-end celebrations. Early Briones will tell us why. As Sydney's Northern Beaches remain a COVID hotspot under tight restrictions, New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian declared that Greater Sydney is now almost at the same risk as its northern counterpart. On Monday, after 16,329 tests conducted, six new local cases were reported, three of which were linked to the Avalon clusters and the other three considered as mystery cases. The three mystery cases include two residents in the Sydney's inner west and northern region, and one in Wollongong in the southern region outside of Sydney. Authorities are now said to be working in contact tracing for these cases. Premier Berejik Lian emphasized that these highlight the need for the entire state to be on high alert, emphasizing all individuals to be responsible for all their actions and compliance to the rules. The Premier says she is aware of the growing frustrations of the residents, especially now that the New Year is approaching. However, she is adamant on stopping a super spread on the upcoming celebration and has now cancelled thousands of reallocated shoreline spots for year and their fireworks and will place a strong police force during the CBD event. Hopefully everybody is very clear now on what the restrictions are for New Year's Eve and what our expectations are. So I just ask everybody to also exercise good personal responsibility and good common sense. Uh, and uh, we're really appealing to everybody to do that. Premier Berejik Lian continues to encourage higher rates of testing in order to adjust rules and restrictions. As testing numbers increase, authorities will make further consideration into the year end. Early Briones, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Nose picking is not only unsanitary but a dangerous action amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. Ia Devera details us why live. Ia? Stuff nose picking is deadly serious that most people don't realize, especially in the time of coronavirus. Nose, mouth, and eyes are three main ways that viruses can enter the body. According to Dr. Paul Pottinger, a professor at University of Washington School of Medicine in Seattle, by doing nose picking, people transfer germs from the fingertips into the nose, which is the opposite of what we want during this pandemic. From the nose picking session, people can spread coronavirus to others and most likely to bring that virus together with other viruses such as influenza or rhinovirus directly into the body. Also, skin inside the nose is delicate and can have tiny cuts in the delicate epithelial linings in the nasal cavity by doing nose picking. Nose has several defense systems to keep pathogens out, including hair at the front of nostrils to block larger particles and the mucous membrane. Dr. Pottinger also mentioned that nose has a small glands that can secrete mucus into the airway in response to foreign invaders including pollen, dirt and dust, and also bacteria and viruses. When this mucus dries up together with whatever it has caught, it forms into what we call boogers, and people tend to pick it out without even thinking. Furthermore, nose picking is considered by mental health professionals as body-focused repetitive behavior, a behavioral habit that often focuses on grooming or removing parts of the body. This is where masks can be very useful as a habit reversal therapy. It's aside from masks' effectiveness in reducing transmission of airborne particles that might contain coronavirus, it helps people to reduce nose picking by blocking the habit or the unconscious finger-to-nose action. However, if, pe if people find nose picking as a reaction to an uncomfortable clogged nose or just want to remove boogers, 
the best way to remove it is to blow the nose into a tissue, then wash your hands instead of removing dried out mucus by fingers. Dr. Pottinger also mentioned that neti pots or saline sprays are other options. A booger is just a dried out piece of mucus and if rehydrated, that mucus can be removed by blowing out or having it come out on its own. Steph? Thank you, Ia, for that report. And those are the reasons behind the news in the other parts of the globe. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on the right side of your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. Back to you, William. Thank you, Stephanie C. Live from Hong Kong. And those are the reasons behind the news, December 29, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. Amangelo Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.